Hello and welcome to this video of the course Answer Set Solving in Practice. I am Javier Romero and I want to show you how to do the exercise on positive logic programs of the introduction part of the course. For this, I'm going to proceed as follows. First, we are going to have a look at the slides of the course, in particular to the slides of the introduction of the course, and there I'm going to highlight the parts that are more relevant for this exercise. If you have not watched the videos about this part of the course, I recommend you to do that before doing this exercise. I put the link below in the description. Then we will solve the exercises applying those definitions. And it will be a bit slow, so to say, because we will be applying the definitions mechanically. But in a later step, we will learn how to solve the exercises faster. And this is the way that you will do, the, do it afterwards, once you have really understood well the concepts. Yes, so let's move on. The exercise is about determining the models of the following positive logic programs and decide which models are stable. So we have this one, two, three, four positive logic program, and our task is to find the models and the stable models of those programs. So then let's move to the slides and see what parts are relevant for this exercise. The exercise tells us to look for the models of this positive logic program. So what is a model? We have it here, a set of atoms closed and the P is a model of P and vice versa. And what was, when was a set of atoms closed under P? We have it in another version of this slide. You have it, this is slide 28. A set of atoms X is closed under a positive program P. If the head of the rule belongs to X, whenever the body, the positive body is contained in X, and in fact, since we are working with positive programs, the positive body equals the body, and this condition holds for all rules of the program. So reading the condition in the other direction, we can say that a set X of atoms is closed under a positive program P if for all rules of the program, if the body is contained in the set, then the head belongs to the set. Now the question is, what is a stable model of a positive logic program? So let's get back to here. So the stable model is what we are referring here by the meaning of the logic program. So this is the stable model. And here we have given two answers to the question of what is the meaning of a positive logic program? What is a, the stable model of a positive logic program? First, let's go through this mathematical answer. And a stable model is, corresponds to the consequences of the program. And the consequences are the smallest model of P. So we take the models, and of those, we choose the unique the smallest model, and that is the stable model of a positive logic program. And this also appeared here, where it says that the meaning of P is given by the subset, the smallest set of atoms closed under P. Is in the set of atoms closed under P corresponds to the models of P. This is the same as what we have seen before. Now, here we also have this procedural answer that the stable model is the value x returned by the procedure applied to p. And we had here that both answers, the procedural answer x and the mathematical answer coincide. Now let's uh, have a look again at the slide where this procedural answer is explained. And this is here. This is the procedural uh, characterization, and then the answer was the meaning of P is given by the value X returned by the procedure applied to P. Again, here I'm just going through the slides. I'm not trying to explain the contents to you. For that, please go and watch the videos where this is explained. In the slides, you can also find a definition of a stable models of a positive logic program if you go to the more general definition of the stable model of a normal logic program. So I will not go deeper into this here, but if you 
have a look at this definition about stable models of normal logic program and go through it, you will see that for the specific case where P is a positive logic program, what the definition tells us is that a set X of atoms is a stable model if X corresponds to the consequences of this program, which is what we have just seen before. Okay, then let's go back to the exercises now that we have quickly reviewed all these concepts. Here we have part A of the exercise with this program P that contains three rules. The first one says that it rains, the second that it is wet if it rains, and the third that it is wet if it is sprinkles. So first we want to find the models of this program, or this, which is the same as finding the sets that are closed under this program. For this, let's consider all possible interpretations of this program. So we have the empty set, and then we have the set where it rains, where it is wet, and where it is sprinkled. And as you can see, instead of writing the whole name of the whole atoms, I'm just writing the first rule, the R for rain, the W for weight, and the S for sprinkled. Now let's consider the interpretations that contain two atoms, R W, R S, and W S, and we also have to consider the one that contains the three atoms, R W S. Now let's see whether the empty set is closed under this program. We will go rule by rule checking the condition on closeness. So we already see that it does not satisfy the condition on closeness for this rule because the body of this rule is contained in the empty set because the body is empty and hence the head of the rule must be contained in the set for P closed for the set to be closed but rain does not belong to this set. Hence we know that the empty set is not closed under this program and it is not a model of this program. Now let's see R. So in this case, the condition for the first rule is satisfied, but for the first rule, the elements in the body of the rule belong to the set. So rain belongs to the set, but the head does not. Hence, this is also not a model of the program. Now, if we check the set that contains the atom wet, again, it cannot be a model of the program because for the first rule for the first rule the body of the rule is contained in the set oops sorry but the head does not belong to the set hence we can say that wet is not a model and similarly some the same happens with the set that just contains a sprinkle so it does not satisfy this rule. Good, now let's consider the set where we have that it rains and it is wet. So it satisfies the condition for this rule, also for this one, because yeah, rain belongs to the set, but wet also belongs to the set, so we are fine. And here, since a sprinkle does not belong to the set, we are fine also with this rule. So we can say that Rain and wet is a model of this program. So let me clean this a bit now to continue. And let's see the set R with rain and sprinkling. So here the first rule is for the first rule it is fine, but so for the second, the body the atoms in the body belong to our set because rain occurs in our set, but the head does not occur in our set. So this cannot be a model of the program. The set is not closed under the program. Let's again clean this and consider the set that says that it is wet and sprinkled and it doesn't have the fact rain. So we know it's not a model. It's not closed under that set. Uh, sorry, under that program. And now if we have that it rains, it is wet and it is sprinkles, we will see that this is also a model of the program because for the first rule, the head 
occurs in the set, for the second rain occurs in the set, but wet also, so we are fine. And in, for the third one, a sprinkle belongs to the set, but wet also belongs to the set, so we are fine. And we can say that this is a model of this program. We can write then here that the models are rain and wet and rain, wet and sprinkle. And now, what is the stable model? So the stable model is the subset smallest model. And here it is rain weight, right? Because this is a subset. Oops, sorry. Because let me undo this. Because this is a subset of the other model. And there is no other model that is a proper subset of it. So then we have that the stable model is rain. So, so far, we have used this mathematical characterization where we first find the models and then we choose the subset minimal of them and say that this is the stable model. But we could also have started with the procedural characterization, find the stable model, and then from there try to find the models. So let's do this. Let's move to here. So in this procedural characterization, what we are doing is we are running an algorithm where we are applying this TP operator until the TP operator doesn't give us any new atom. Again, if you don't remember this, please go and check the videos where this is explained. So we start with the empty set and we apply the operator to this set. And here, okay, first let me clean this a bit. Yeah, so here we initially, we just get the fact rain and let's call this set x1. Then in the next iteration, given that we have rain from here, we can apply the second rule and obtain wet. So we have rain and wet and let's call this x2. And now if we finally apply it again, having rain and wet, we don't get anything else because there's no way to obtain sprinkle actually because it does not occur in any head. So then we have that it rains and it is wet and this is x3 which is equal to x2 and then we know we can stop the algorithm and say that this rain and wet is a stable. And of course this coincides with what we, we gave before, said before, because this is how it is. Now that we know that rain and wet is the stable model of the program, we have to go and look for the models of the program. But now, how should we do it? One option is got just to get back to here and check again every set to see whether it's closed or not under the program. But in this way, we wouldn't take advantage of the fact that we know that this is a stable model. What we can do is think a bit about it. So we know that this is the unique subset minimal model of the program. Then what we know, think a bit about it, is that all the other models are supersets of this. So then if we know that RW is the stable model of the program, then we know that the only other models are the ones that are superset of it. So we only have to check a WS. Let's go this a bit, let's see this a bit, bit by bit. So we know that if this is a stable model, then these two cannot be models because they are smaller than it. But what about this with S? So then we also know that this cannot be a model because this is the unique smallest model of the program. So if this was also a model, then these two would be both minimal models of the program, but there's only one 
So then this cannot be a model of the program. And similarly, if these two were models, then they would also be a smallest model of the program, given that these are not, and because we have just said it before, right? So then these cannot be models of the program, because if not, they would be also minimal models of the program, and we know that this is the unique one. So then we are left with what we said before, that the only set that can still be a model of the program once we know that this is the stable model is this one. So then what we can do is say, okay, let's check whether red, wet, and sprinkle is a model, and we have already checked it before. We know that this is indeed the case. Now we can go even a step further, and if we think a bit about it, we can come to the conclusion that the set that contains all the atoms, in this case, rain, wet, and sprinkle, is always a model of the program. Because for every rule, it will satisfy the condition on closeness because the head will always belong to the set. So then, actually, what we can do is, Good, now we know that rain and wet is a stable model, so we just have to check whether rain, wet, and a sprinkle is a model. And indeed, since it contains all the atoms, we know that this is a model, and we can conclude here saying that these are the two models of the program, which again coincides with what we have before, which is to be expected. Good. So now we have applied two methods to find the models and the stable models. The first is to consider all interpretations and go one by one, checking whether they are closed or not. And for those that are closed, we say that they are models and the smallest of them is the stable model. The other approach is first to apply the procedural characterization to compute a stable model and then to consider only the supersets of it and check each of them. And what happened here is that since the only superset contains all atoms, we already can say that this is also a model. So now, as I promised you before, let's do this um, quickly as I, yes, let's do it quickly. And for this, basically what I'm going to do is apply this procedure already here on the program and basically then do the same as what we did here before. Okay, so let me clean this. So then this is how I would solve the exercise. So I have the fact rain, so I know rain must belong to uh, every model and to the stable model of the program. And if I have rain, then I have wet. And that's it. I cannot fire any more rules. So then I know that rain wet is the stable model, the unique stable model of this program. Now, if I want to, to find the models of the program, I just have to consider the supersets of it. And then I could rewrite this part here where I say that rain wet is a model. And I can also consider just the unique superset of it, which also say has a sprinkle. And since a sprinkle, and since this set contains all atoms, we know it is a model. And then I could return that these are the models of the program. Good. So that was it for this part A. We have been doing it quite slowly, but this is just to show you. In the next exercises, I will do it quicker now that you have already understood the concepts.